as your Kubernetes deployments grow, you'll have more and more objects available to you in the Kubernetes interface, both on the command line and on the web. Don't worry, we'll get into the web interface later. There are a variety of tools that are available to you to organize items within the Kubernetes interface. These are called labels and selectors. However, labels aren't useful just for organizing for the end user. Labels can be used to describe to Kubernetes how various objects and resources within the cluster work together. As your Kubernetes deployments grow, they'll invariably include multiple services, pods, and other resources. Keeping track of these can become cumbersome. Even more challenging can be describing to Kubernetes how these various resources interact, how you want them to be replicated, scaled, and serviced, and what to do and to what object when things might go wrong. That's where labels and selectors come in. Labels are key value pairs that let you set human readable attributes on nearly any resource. Selectors are the criteria you can use to match labels. This way, using labels and selectors together, you can begin to describe to Kubernetes how your system is configured. Kubernetes also provides a few labels out of the box for common concepts. For example, things like host name, operating system type, architecture, and the like are defined on nodes. A complete list of the predefined labels is available in the Kubernetes documentation. Let's work with an example of how we use labels and selectors to accomplish a task in Kubernetes. For example, let's say we had a deployment and we had a variety of nodes in our infrastructure. But only one of these nodes had an SSD. All the others were spinning disks. We have an application which requires an SSD for both speed and consistency. We can use labels and selectors to describe to Kubernetes the variety of traits about our nodes. We'd apply labels to each node indicating whether they had an SSD or a spinning disk. Then we could use selectors to tell Kubernetes that when it's deciding what nodes to run a given pod on, to only use nodes that had a label, SSD. Labels and selectors together are not only good for organizing for a human in a, in a interface like kubectl or the web. Labels and selectors allow Kubernetes to make decisions based on logic that you describe to it in the deployment to do real actual tasks in scheduling and error recovery. You can label nearly anything in the Kubernetes world, whether it's deployment, services, nodes, or anything else that's addressable through the Kubus ETL interface. Let's use labels to label a node that has SSD storage, and then use a selector to tell the deployment that our application should only ever go on to a node with SSD storage. For this example, we're going to use node selector. Node selector is a property on a deployment that uses labels and selectors to choose which nodes the master decides to run a given pod on. To accomplish our goal of running our deployment only on nodes with an SSD, we will first label a node as having an SSD. Then we'll define the node selector on our deployment to match only nodes having the label we just defined. The first order of business is to label our node. Let's use the kubectl get nodes command to find the names of our nodes. Since we're running on a minikube, there's only one predictably named minikube. Let's type kubectl label space node space minikube to specify we'd like to label the minikube node. Then let's tell it we'd like to label the storage type equals SSD on that node. Once this is set, we can use the kubectl describe node command to look and make sure that our label was set. If we scroll up, we can see that the label was successfully applied. Now that our label has been applied to our node, we'll need to apply the node selector to our deployment. Let's go look at the deployment.yaml file. Remember, this is available in GitHub under the labels and selectors directory. 
the deployment.yaml file looks pretty much like we have throughout this course, except we've added node selector with storage type equaling SSD. This tells Kubernetes that when it's selecting nodes to deploy Tomcat onto, it should look for a label named storage type with the value SSD. Since we've made a change to our deployment.yaml file, we'll need to use the kubectl apply command to apply that change. Let's make sure that we're in the proper directory and look at the deployment YAML file to make sure it's the right file. Looks good to us. Now let's use the kubectl apply command with the dash f flag and pointing to the deployment.yaml. This will apply the new updated deployment.yaml file onto our Kubernetes cluster. As you can see, the deployment was successfully configured. Using the kubectl apply command allows you to apply changes to the deployment that may not be possible using a variety of kubectl commands. For example, node selector must be done in the deployment file. Kubernetes is smart enough to understand what changes need to be applied and what is different from the new application of the deployment from the existing one. With this change applied, Kubernetes will only deploy Tomcat to nodes that have been labeled with a storage type equaling SSD.